In this video, I'm going to take a look at the co-function identities. I have written all of the co-function identities over here on the left-hand side, and I have written them using 90 degrees. So you would use these formulas if you were trying to find an equivalent answer, like right here I've got sine of 72 degrees, and let's say you needed to know what um, angle had the equivalent answer to that, but in a cosine, because your sine and cosine are co-function identities. Tangent and cotangent are co-function identities, and as well as secant and cosecant. All right, now I have written these only once. All right, if you were doing this in radians, you would use pi over 2 in place of the 90. All right, but to save writing them down twice, we'll just let you know you use pi over 2. All right, um, if you do not have these copied down or you don't have a list of these or a reference sheet with these on there, you probably need to pause the video at this point and write them down. All right, at the very beginning um, of a trig course, you are introduced to these function, co-function identities, and it's just a basic trying to get you used to finding um, an angle that when I take the sine and cosine of it, I get the same value. So you would see probably typically questions that look like this. Find the co-function with the same value as the given expression. So they're giving you an expression either in degrees or radians, and they're wanting the co-function. So if you see sine, you know your answer has to be cosine, and the question is, it's the cosine of what angle? Okay, the formula says if I'm trying to find sine of 72, then I can do cosine of 90 minus 72. Okay, so your line of work would be cosine 90 degrees minus the 72 degrees. It's a matter of just subtracting that right there. 9D minus 72 is going to be 18. So cosine of 18 degrees is the co-function that has the exact same value. All right, now if you want to uh, prove that it does, then um, verify it by using your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode. If you did a verify, you would plug both of those values in to the calculator for the sine of 72 degrees. You would get 0.9511. And then if you would punch in cosine of 18 degrees, all right, you would get 0.9511. Okay, so um, making sure that that calculator is in degree mode and then that verifies that they do have the exact same value. All right, so um, over here, I've got the cosecant of pi over 3. Pi over 3 is in radians, so I don't want to subtract from 90 degrees. I'm going to want to subtract from pi over 2. All right, I also have to find the cofunction for cosecant. All right, well, cosecant is down here at the bottom of the chart. Its cofunction is secant, so that means I'm going to follow the formula, and I'm going to do the secant. I'm going to replace the 90 with the pi over 2, pi over 2 minus whatever my theta is, which is pi over 3. All right, at this point, if you're um, doing this by hand, you would want common denominators in there, so secant of 3 pi over 6 minus a 2 pi over 6. All right, that's just getting common denominators, multiplying this fraction by 3 over 3, multiplying applying this fraction by 2 over 2. Now I've got common denominators I can subtract, so it's going to be the secant of pi over 6. All right, so this cofunction has the exact same value as the cosecant of pi over 3. All right, and again, if you put your calculator in radian mode and plugged both of those in, you would get the same decimal. Um, so just a really um, short introduction into how you can find a cofunction, all right, and the fact that it gives you an equivalent expression. Definitely thanks for watching. If the videos are helping, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Thanks.